Hello and welcome to Tao Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Hill. What's going on, guys? And today we're here to talk about Amazon's Roadhouse. Yay. <laughs> Ex-UFC fighter Dalton takes a job as a bouncer at a Florida Keys Roadhouse only to discover that this paradise is not all it seems. Roadhouse was released on March 21st, 2024. It currently has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 59% and an audience score of 54%. So, Todd, before we discuss Roadhouse in detail, let's play How Many Stars. Oh, all right. Todd, I've got five Rotten Tomatoes audience reviews for Roadhouse here. I'll read your review, and you tell me from one to five how many stars you think the person gave the film. Okay. Uh, just a uh, note, these reviews could contain spoilers. Uh, so we have Liam C. He says, love this thing. Don't come into this looking for groundbreaking script, fully fleshed out characters with in-depth backstories or thought-provoking acting. You should watch this because it's fun. Turn your brain off. Get comfy on the couch. Cheese ball movie. It's an easy watch, and I'd recommend to anybody who has a fondness of the 80s, 90s, cheesy action man movies. How many stars? I think you gave it a five. Gave it a four star. Ah, oh, dang it. Four star. Um, Ivan B says it looks like a computer shooter without much effort on the part of the creators to come up with some kind of coherent plot absolutely meaningless change of video frames dull motives faceless characters empty film they brought the UFC here to attract fans as potential spectators but showed no respect for mixed, mar mixed martial arts nice picture beautiful views in places but if you just want crazy action but with some meaning and logic turn on any GTA scenes on YouTube undoubtedly this is not the worst art we've seen recently but it is clearly garbage I don't understand at all why this film was made I wonder if they really think teenagers are that stupid how many stars it's gotta be the one that's a two star are you shitting it's a two star okay he tore it a new asshole and he still gave it and two he still stars. gave it two stars RB says loved it better than the original that says a lot it's a must watch no porn all action five but he's wrong <laughs> five but he's wrong yeah <laughs> Uh, Gonzalo L says, was good till Connor showed up. Uh, three. Two star. Ah. And finally, Peter D says, horrible. Oh my God, what a stinker. Terrible script, bad remake. I had to rewatch the original to wash the bad taste out of my mouth. Piss poor acting by McGregor. <laughs> what a waste of time. Here's your one, right? Five star. No, I'm just it's, it's hard to say. It's a one. Okay. It's a one. Good job, pal. So uh, we're going to go ahead right into spoilers. The so spoilers are ahead. Todd, say some words about Roadhouse. I'm really interested in what you thought about Roadhouse 2024. Uh, you know, honestly, I kind of debated on how to go about this. Do you kind of look at it extremely critically, like it's a major Hollywood blockbuster release? Or do you just kind of take this thing for maybe what they were shooting for, just a a, kind of a throwback to old classic cheesy, you know, insert plot here if you got one, but if you don't, it ain't no problem. <laughs> Action movies. Yeah, but I would kind of rebut that too with saying there's a lot of parts of this movie that wants to be more than that. Right. And wants to do some shit that, that it, it don't really pull that off. That it don't pull off. Okay, you're, you're so right. I would you're rebut right. that a little bit. And. We talked about the the last last you know, time we did a popcorn moment. We talked about Roadhouse, nineteen eighty nine. Oh gee, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, there's no comparison between the two. There's no like. No, I'm not talking about quality. I'm talking about story wise. Right. This is a this is Roadhouse in name alone, not in story or content or anything like that. Yeah. But yeah. um, I'll I'll let you continue on here. I just I want to rebut that. But what what else were your thoughts about this? Because before I go here, uh. You know, uh, you know, you always say, Todd, would you recommend this to anyone? Right. Uh, if you've got Amazon Prime, which I think half the world maybe does by this point. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's your thing, too, about you said, like, is this like a big motion picture thing? I think yeah. there was a little bit of controversy with the director, Doug Lyman, about he was under this. He was, I think he boycotted the premiere of this because he was he was sold or under the impression that this was going to go to theaters oh, okay. and they put it to streaming. So he had a little bit of a, 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 a bad reaction to that fact. Um, so yeah, it does live in that. Did they mean it as a big motion picture or to streaming? I think it was meant, I think with all intents and purposes, the, the people behind it meant it as a big theater yeah. release, but it gets put on Amazon prime for anybody to watch it for free after they've you know been done buying their Hamilton beach juicers and dragon <laughs> deal. <dildos. laughs> Because they've signed up for it. Dragon, you say. <laughs> Dragon. Uh, they've signed up for Amazon Prime because you can watch it free. And we should note this is apparently the biggest, uh, most watched thing Amazon's ever had uh, based on the articles I was reading. And I think that lends a lot to the original Roadhouse. The name, I think, brought a lot of people to this. Yeah. That's just my opinion, Also, of course, the article but... was clear to point out that Amazon doesn't state what constitutes a view. 
<laughs> right. That could be two click seconds. Click on, click off. <laughs> click on, click off. Exactly. Do I regret watching it? No. Do I ever see myself watching this again? No. Yeah. Um. I. There is a de- there's a definite point to this where I was like, all right, I'm I'm watching this and I it's whatever. I'm just whatever. Right. Right. And there's a point where. Conor McGregor comes in, oh, and I'm yeah. like, I fucking hate this. <laughs> and I, it's not a good movie to me. Um, if I had never seen it, like, I wish there was a kind of a way, like, I could just know if I wanted to see it without seeing it kind of way. But I just, I, I re- there's a lot of stuff about it that really pisses me off. And I think there's a lot of, like, things that if you if it explored those ideas a little bit, I think it could have been interesting. But mm-hmm. as it is, it's just... Uh, Tonally inconsistent mess. Yeah, because there's some things for me that I think is really even inconsistent with Dalton in this movie. Yeah, he's the big problem. Mm-hmm. Like Jake Gyllenhaal, like, you know, Gyllenhaal's in. He's in as Elwood Dalton this time. Yeah. Elwood, he has a first name this time. He's a former UFC fighter, right. and he has some kind of tragic backstory that is teased throughout the film. Something happened with him and somebody, somebody else in the octagon. Right. Shock, he killed him. <laughs> Any, anybody didn't see that fucking coming about right. what happened in there. No, they shook hands and went away, and he just, he's got PTSD. No, he killed... Yeah. Apparently killed his friend in the octagon. All right, which we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in a point that I have to make. But he's a former UFC fighter, and uh, since he killed his buddy in the octagon, he's just he's got like a death wish. Yeah. And you open the movie, and there's like a, a fight club going on, some kind of underground fight club, and Post Malone's out there. Automatically, the movie is wanting me to spin belief. Disbelief. Because I'm supposed to think Post Malone is winning fights at this point. I guess that guy that he was fighting, that's yeah. my first note. Post Malone <laughs> beats up a guy he could only beat up in a movie. That's my exact <laughs> fucking note. Uh, right off the bat, you asked me to suspend disbelief. <laughs> and a lot of people got in real good shape for this movie. You know who didn't? Post, Post Malone. Malone. <laughs> Not... <laughs> Listen, I'm one to talk, but I, still, right. like, uh, right. uh, do a sit-up post <laughs> before you get on camera like that, my guy. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, so I have to suspend disbelief, Post Malone. Everybody's like, oh, who's this guy? We know that. You know who that is? That's that yeah. guy fucking moited that guy. <laughs> and they're like, nobody wants to fight him, yeah. and Post Malone doesn't fight him, and they still give him the money that he was supposed to get for fighting and beating that guy. Yeah. I'm like, I would just keep that money. You didn't actually fight. Why would I give you this money? So I guess that's apparently his thing is he's going around to these places hoping people will recognize him. And they're like, well, you're fucking with him. Yeah. And he'll get the money by default and he ain't got to fight nobody. And then that's also contrasted when he's supposed to have some kind of death wish. Because he immediately leaves there. He gets talked to by the girl that used to be on mm-hmm. The Daily Show. I think her name is Jessica Williams, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure. Jessica Williams. She mm-hmm. plays Frankie. She owns the roadhouse not not a place that's named and is a roadhouse it's not because we don't remember the name of it folks she, it's just called the roadhouse, the roadhouse. <laughs> it's not that she owns a bar that is a roadhouse that's mm. called something else like mm. the double deuce or the, the, yeah. the td twister or whatever <laughs> else it's called the roadhouse mm. Uh, and she uh, approaches him outside after he lets himself get stabbed intentionally mm-hmm. by some dude. It's like, hey, you, you fucking lost me money, guy. Yeah. And he lets himself get stabbed for no reason because he's supposed to have this death wish kind of thing. So he's like patching himself up, and she's like, hey, I got this. I got the roadhouse, and we need a, a bouncer, and uh, I'll pay you $5 uh, a week for a month to come in and like, clean the place out because I've never seen you fight, but people are scared of you. <laughs> so come on down. Because wasn't she really wanting Post Malone? Was that who she yeah, went there for? Yeah, yeah. She went there for Post Malone. Yeah. <laughs> You dodged the bullet there, you baby. You dodged the bullet there. I'm yeah, just she went there for Post Malone. Love you, Post. She went there for Post Malone. <laughs> so he's like, ah, I don't know. Then he has a scene where he like stops his car on the train tracks to kill himself. I know. And then he pushes out of that because mm-hmm. uh, he really doesn't have a death wish apparently. Because he he he, he, does, he at least he doesn't have a, he doesn't have enough balls to kill himself. And it's never really touched on or explored again. Not really. He no. just stays like loosey goosey, happy happy. Yeah, kind of. See, see, that's the thing. <laughs> like he's got this death wish. He's he's supposed to have this deep seated stuff, which we'll get to. Um, but yeah, he doesn't kill himself. So he had, he heads in down to the Florida Keys to the roadhouse, meets up with Frankie. She hires him. And then we get, you know, uh, our, the scenes that are kind of most reminiscent for a while, the original roadhouse, which is him kind of cleaning up, but does he, ha- he doesn't have a plan. He's not put together. He's not Swayze. Mm-mm. He's not a professional at this. He's just some asshole who can fight real good like and that's like some of the better parts of the original roadhouse is like like we were talking about before that little like 
the mentality stuff that he tries to teach the the other yeah. bouncers and like, hey, you got to do this, and there's three rules, and you can't take this shit personally. If somebody calls you a cocksucker, don't react. And like he tries to like help the whatever the boy there. He tries to get him some pointers. And yeah. It's like, hey, that dude's got a knife. He just when he swings it at you, you, duck back and punch him in the face. Yeah. Easier said than done, asshole. <laughs> like you know what I mean. But he does it, I'm sure. Um, but like yeah, he it's a little bit of that. But he's like, and he comes in and they and they even compare him in the movie to like Mister Rogers. And that's kind of yeah. like how he's kind of acting. He's like all smiley, water off a duck's back. Nothing bothers me. He gets off the bus and. In the keys, and the first person he meets is this like kind of teenage girl gives him a book about a fucking tree growing in the freeway, <laughs> whatever. Right. But like she gives him that book, and he develops this little relationship with a bookstore girl, and her and her dad there, and they're like it's they're having a hard time making ends meet, and her mom died. Yeah. And there's your like tug at the heartstring, right? Like small violin stuff, you know that's going to come back up at some point. And so he kind of meets them, then he goes to the roadhouse, and him and Frankie they kind of set up the deal, and you get like a few scenes of them kind of. Him bouncing some dudes out. And uh, and he drives them to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. The first <laughs> dudes that come along are like some biker dudes. And like you can tell that they're there to like, they're not just there to, because they're pricks and they're causing trouble. They're intentionally there causing trouble. Mm. They're intentionally being pricks and causing trouble there. Like I think the, the leader, the main guy is like called Dale. And he comes in with like a couple other guys. And there's one guy that's like really doesn't want a, a part of it. He's like really apologetic yeah, he's like, and really, he's real I'm, nice. Yeah, he's like, he's like, he, Dalton asked. I'm like, where's the hospital? He's like, oh, it's like 25 miles from here. Yeah. And he goes outside and he gets them outside and he ends up beating their asses and he breaks the nice guy's arm. Uh, and like, then he drives them to the hospital, like you said, because he's a nice guy. He's God. a nice he's guy. He's just a nice He's guy. overall a nice guy. He's overall a nice guy, you think. Uh, and then uh, you get some scenes of that for a while. He's That kind of escalates into those guys are there for a purpose and it kind of puts him on to... Like, why are these guys so dead set on, like, trying to call shit at this one particular place? And it's the most, I think, overused, most cliched thing in movies and TV shows of all time. You got the one holdout that won't let their land or their business or this X property or that Y property go yeah. to the guy that's already bought up every other fucking thing around it. Exactly. How many times have we seen that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're introduced to bad guy, McBad guy. I think his name is Ben Brandt. And we know he's a bad guy because he wants to get a straight razor shave at sea. Yeah. That's on, how on we choppy do, waters. On choppy waters. That's how we know he's a bad guy. And he like, gets his... He gets his neck slid about three times because he's a fucking dumbass. Goes up and punches the boat driver. Yeah, punches, yeah that, that'll <laughs> help things. But yeah, he, he and like, and it's like the most cliched thing. And uh, it, it's it's a land thing. It's a Lex Luthor land thing. It's a land scheme. It's a land scheme. The roadhouse is the last bit of property he needs to put up like this big condominium thing for retirement homes mm -hmm. or some shit like that. Some kind of resort. Was. Resort, yeah. yeah. He's bought up all the other property on the beachfront. Everything but the roadhouse road is house. holding him up. <laughs> and she's holding, Frankie's holding out because it was her uncle's place and now she's taking ownership of it and she's the last holdout and he wants to get rid of the roadhouse, get her off the land, get the land and do a resort. But it's also, it's like, it's so stupid because it's like, uh, I want this because of land and I also want it for drugs. But that's not delved into. It's just yeah. like glossed over because like you find out later like that he does run drugs and stuff. But that's not even like part of it. It's never shown. The drug running's never you done. You never see it. How it's going to work, how it factors into him needing that land. None of it's ever shown. So it's like, why even have the drug angle? Well, he's just a piece of shit business guy. <laughs> the drug angle makes no sense to even, even kind of like throw in there. And um, you've got like... Then now Dalton's beating the shit out of them, so they got to take Dalton out. They're getting pissed off that the bouncer keeps continually beating the shit out of them. At one point, they try to run him over on the bridge. Yeah. And that is awful. The way he's like jettisoned into the back of that truck right. and it's like hanging over the edge. <laughs> that The CGI is fucking awful. It right. looks, looks terrible. And then they try to run him over. It doesn't work. The, the truck... Hangs on the side of the bridge, falls down. He's in the water. He has to walk his ass back to uh, Frankie's. Let him use uh, her uncle's boat that she was also gifted, which is named the, the boat. boat. <laughs> yeah, uh, her uncle, a real unoriginal fucker. Yeah. 
yeah, he calls his boat the boat. So he's living on her boathouse, and they keep mentioning there's a croc. A crocodile. To watch out for a croc. Because they ate some guy's dog down there. And what I was hoping was going to happen is he was just going to live on a houseboat like Sonny Crockett. With the, with the croc. be friends with the croc. Yeah, with yeah. Name, name it Elvis or something. <laughs> and I thought this was going to be like a Miami Vice, Sonny Crockett, and his crocodile thing. Uh, but no, uh, that guy beats him back home, and he's there with a shotgun. He's like, hey, I was going to try to make this easy, make you look like you hit by a drunk driver. But now i got to kill you with a shotgun. He gets the drop on him. He ends up throwing him off the boat, and he ends up getting eaten by the croc. That just is hanging out there. Just happens to be right there in that spot. At the exact moment <laughs> that he needs him to be eaten by a croc, so he gets eaten by a croc. And then, it's pretty much at this point, so uh, Bad Guy McBad Guy's dad is in jail. Is in jail. And uh, he's he's getting pissed that his son can't take care of business and get, uh, you know, he's getting beat by a bouncer. So he calls in Conor McGregor. And as soon as he's introduced. What was his name? Knox. I Knox. think it was Knox. Yes. He, as soon as he's introduced, there is a... If it was totally inconsistent before, it really goes over the fucking edge when right. he's introduced. And he's like, he's like shown like, I don't know, coming out of some married woman's bedroom and he's butt naked and he's walking through town and he's got that like fucking always clinched Buffed Connor up. McGregor, <laughs> like always flexed fucking walk. Like he's got a half of a shit hanging out of his <laughs> ass too. He goes down and he's sizing up some guy for his clothes and he goes back to that phone call and he comes back and that whole little downtown scene is on fire yeah. and he's walking away. He's like a overly comical bad guy. He's like overly comical in his like, anarchist behavior right and he can't act his way out of a wet paper bag why not make that <laughs> character like the strong silent type right like remember like chuck norris and like return of the dragon i think it was called yeah where he has that fight with bruce lee and they don't neither one of them say Says shit, a word and it's just badass like what you know conor mcgregor can't act <laughs> <laughs> Just make him the strong, silent type. Make him say th three words in the whole movie and make him, like, real menacing. He can still be, you know, an anarchist and, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, like, don't don't give him as many lines as you give this man. And this is something that I actually thought about when I was coming up here tonight. What if they had played it where maybe he was the brother of the guy that uh, Gyllenhaal killed? And like that, you know, the guy calls him from, the dad calls him from prison. He's like, hey, how, would you like a shot at the guy that killed your brother? You know what I mean? Which brother? You, like, say that uh, Knox was the brother of the guy that Gyllenhaal killed in the, in the UFC. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, all right. Some I mean, kind of angle for him to be angle. there. Yeah, I didn't think of that, but at least you give some motivation to Because you can have an over-the-top villain only so far till it becomes... Fucking absurd. And, and this was this, fucking absurd from the is, time he walks out with his ass hanging out. Yeah. Because he does stupid shit like he, he I guess he stole like a, a student driver's car and just wrecks it for no fucking reason. <laughs> it's a fucking tree. And, and he, has absolutely, he, he has absolutely no dialogue of any kind of depth or Not interest. any meaningful Nothing. dialogue, no. And I think I read somewhere that his voice was uh, kind of what they did with that guy's voice and Madam Webb was enhanced or ADR'd like or am ADR. I wrong? Yeah, yeah. That, you, you, can, you can hear sometimes where it definitely sounds like it was recorded later yeah. and like they had to get him back in and be like Connor can you do it where you don't suck <laughs> uh all right let me try it. Connor if you ever Who see the this fuck is that guy <laughs> he's gonna come up here and beat the shit out of both of us hey, isn't he we're gone <laughs> But it's just, like I say, you can only push that so far where it just goes into pure absurdity. It's absurd. And it's just absurdity. It's absurd from the, from the get-go. Yeah. And he go, they so McGregor, they go to the bar, and he brings his golf club, and he's like, I'm going clubbing. <laughs> and, and they go in there. Dalton. Dalton, yeah. And he goes in there, and he's, and he's swinging the club around, and they start – Punching people and hitting people, and they start like a fight, and some random dude is like bar fight, <laughs> bam, and like starts punching people, and it come and it becomes a whole absurd bar fight for no reason. And this is at the point where I'm like, you're paying this dude five thousand dollars, he lets that shit go on for like thirty minutes. <laughs> Dalton, All he ever gets up Dalton, and does anything. Dalton is terrible at his job. He is not <laughs> worth five grand a fucking week. I would have paid him shit for that night. Uh, but he finally goes in, and uh, him and uh, you know Conor McGregor have a little fight. Mm. And there's like that supposed to be that moment where Conor McGregor is like, you know, he's like the badass, but he like, oh, he sees something. This guy, this guy's as fucked up as I am. Right. He's just taking all these shots to the face and like, there's something wrong with you guy. <laughs> like they have that little moment. Yeah. And then um, 
I guess we got to set up the nurse. Forgot about the nurse. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. He, he, after he's, uh, at some point, he goes to the hospital. When he drives those guys to the hospital, right. he meets uh, this version of Nurse Heidi. Right. Uh, out of this. And she, or not, she's not a doctor, not a nurse. Let me not sell her short. She's a doctor. And uh, she's doing her, his little patch up job. And they have a, uh, a little forced romance kind of angle that right. that's there. Uh, she's, uh, we kind of hear through the film that she's had some kind of like a former relationship with a cop. Uh, her ex-boyfriend was a cop and mm-hmm. she regularly steals his boat from him and her and Gillen Hall have a little like, uh, you know, kind of little date out in the little like reef area of the, of the ocean or whatever, or the, the keys there. Kind of low tide area. <laughs> yeah. Like a low tide area. And they have like a little date and they bang in the water or whatever there, I guess. And, but, uh, she's kind of set up that little relationship with a cop that kind of comes up and she kind of calls the cops and has mm-hmm. the cop guy like, Hey, you know, we need to send a couple units down to like, uh, break up this bar fight or whatever. Yeah. So that's, that's what breaks Connor and all them up for the first time around. And, uh, it's, I guess the next real kind of big thing is like, it, it's set up that uh, all this keeps happening. Uh, they keeps repeating. They keep trying to do shit. Bad Mac guy, McBad guy comes in and he's like having another, he having a little face to face with Dalton. And he's like, oh, I can't buy you off. Yeah. I can't do this. I can't do that. If I thought you'd take the money, I'd let you. Yeah. And it's all like, again, water off a duck's back. He doesn't seem to be angry. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I th- is it that point after him and Connor have the first fight that he tries to leave? Is that when it happens? Because he gets the shit beat out of him at one point. I think it's after the cops, maybe. Yeah, because we find out that uh, the doc is the daughter of the, I guess it's the local sheriff. Big Dick. Yeah, his name is Big Dick. <laughs> yeah. he. Uh, there's a little scene where... Con- <laughs> <laughs> there's a little scene where Dalton's in the back of their cruiser because they mm-hmm. pick him up and so they can threaten him and tell him, hey, we're on the payroll of yeah. bad guy, McBad guy. You need to get out of town and stop doing your shit, Dalton. And uh, he's like, I forget how the line works, but he's like, you know... If you call me something, it's like, oh, yeah, they call me Big Dick. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. Why? This, this just movie, why? just why? <laughs> just why? Uh, but, yeah, he, he's a uh, sheriff guy, is a uh, father of Dr. Hottie. Right. And uh, he's kind of like, you know, they're kind of telling him to get out of town and all this kind of stuff. And I don't even remember what leads him to, like. He's going to leave. Yeah, for some reason. I forget exactly what And that when he happens. goes down there and sees where they have burnt the bookstore down. Yeah, the next evolution yeah. of it, he t- you know, the bad guy, the guy, guy tells him, like, you know, to you know, take the gloves off, I guess, even more. And so they send a couple of the goons down there to the bookstore, and they burn the bookstore down, mm-hmm. and they supposedly, you don't see it, but they, they supposedly beat up the girl and her dad. Yeah. But it's off screen. You don't see what happens to them until later. And he he's, like, going out of town. He's leaving for whatever reason. He's walking away from all of it. Uh, it's too much for him at this point. And then he sees that the bookstore's been burned down. Mm-hmm. And he asks about the girl. And she said they, they were taken to the hospital in an ambulance. To jump ahead with that, how that wraps up, they're fine. They're okay. She they're barely, like, it looks like maybe they slapped her a little <laughs> bit. Like she's got a tiny little bit of a bruise around her eye. And I'm like, they just took her to the hospital so they could like uh, charge her for riding an ambulance. And, <laughs> and give her an ER bill. There yeah. was no reason. Like that's another thing. Like if you'd had it like. Set up where like they really like beat her to like she was mm-hmm. in a coma, then I could see that. Yeah, I could see that turn like they really beat mm-hmm. the shit out of her, and maybe they killed her dad. Like mm-hmm. if you really gave him a reason to really yeah. be pissed, but he doesn't even check on the status of him. Yeah, like she really just got a little tap on the eye. She was fine. Yeah, like she wasn't like beat nearly to death. She was just you know they burnt the store or whatever. Yeah, and so he goes off the deep end. Here's where it changes again. Here's yeah. where we totally this swing. This is where I really have my problem. Here's where we totally <laughs> swing again. So, like, Dalton goes, and now he's just a straight psychopath. Yeah. His character is, uh, he's basically, uh, you wouldn't like me if I'm angry guy. <laughs> you push me too far. Mm-hmm. Here's my breaking point. But I'm I'm going beyond just what a normal you've made me angry guy is. Yeah. You're, you're taking me to, like, I'm now, like, a psychopath. He's now, yeah. And he goes to the little house where Connor and them all are normally staying, and they're... There's not many of them there at this point. It's, like, dark. And he finds one of the goons that you've seen a couple times on Bad Guy's boat. And he goes up to him, and he, like, punches him in the throat and, like, breaks his hit a bone in his throat and, mm-hmm. like, breaks his, like, crushes his trachea. He's like, oh, you're not going to be able to breathe anymore. And the dude falls in the pool and dies. And you're like, okay. Like, all right. Yeah. Well, he's he's getting serious about this. All right, he killed this dude. Yeah, Swayze ended up killing some dudes before. All right. 
Then he takes his fucking body, <laughs> puts it in the back of a fucking pickup, gets some bags of ice and stuffs it in the freezer. Yeah. And you're like, this is a fucking psycho. <laughs> Swayze would have left him there. Swayze left that one dude in the river. Yeah, with his throat ripped out. He just leave him in the pool. Yeah, this dude takes it. I'm like, what is he doing? What is this dude doing? Why is he take? Why is he putting him on ice and taking? He him? takes his. He takes his body, and I guess we're 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 supposed to believe that he kept the dude's body in the freezer with ice, um, so he could use it to pin a murder on a dirty cop. I th- yeah, I think yeah, maybe. I, I mean, we're I don't. <laughs> I'm not really sure what the plan was for that body had the sheriff not come immediately after that scene and been like, oh, they've kidnapped my daughter. Yeah, Big so Dick he, shows up. Yeah, so he, <laughs> so, yeah, so I forgot one part. So he, um, he, he takes that dude's body for whatever reason. He takes it, he learns from the, the cop guy that they've taken his daughter. And wait a minute, no, it, I forget the money thing. The money thing is before that. He, how does he learn about the uh, the drug deal? Oh, nice guy tells him. That's right. Nice guy. After he after he breaks that dude and, and kills that one dude, he's like, I never really want to be part of this gang yeah, anyway. I'm just to, I'm just going to get out of here. Supposed to be some kind of big money uh, deal in the uh, meeting in the morning to five a.m. Uh, yeah. Good luck to you. And he takes <laughs> off, and so he goes to that meeting and takes that dead body, and he finds a cop like tr- uh, you know dragging a, a trunk full of money, mm-hmm. and he uh, gets a drop on the cop. Then takes that dude, the dead dude's body that he kept on ice all night, and drags it to the beach. Takes the cop's gun, shoots him like four times in the chest, and then starts to try to pin that on the cop. But does he kill the cop to make it look like it's possible? No. no. He gives some half-assed line about giving him a concussion and messing with his short-term memory. Cracks him in the head with a branch, <laughs> and then immediately the next scene. Uh, a daddy of hot doctor, big dick <laughs> sheriff is there, and he's like, "Oh, hey, remember that copy hitting the bed with a branch? He told me everything." <laughs> he's like, "Huh? I guess that didn't work. I guess that didn't work. He told me everything. He told me you cracked him in the head with a branch and drug a dead body down here and tried to pin it on him. Uh, what's up with that? The fuck? Also, where's the money, guy? And he's like, "Oh, well, uh, the money's not here. So let mm-hmm. me. I have to go find and get the money. Oh, oh, your daughter's been kidnapped. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see about that too. Yeah." And then he goes and steals uh, Dr. Hottie's ex-boyfriend's cop boat. They steals the boat. I don't. It wasn't clear to me. Uh, at one point, Conor McGregor is shown with a bag of like dynamite or some shit, some kind of explosive material. Yeah. Like he comes to town with that that explosive material. Mm-hmm. How does he get a hold of that? Was that at that house? I guess. I'm thinking maybe when he cracked that dude's throat, did he find the bag of Simtex or whatever it is? Sure. 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 It's not explained, <laughs> but some but somehow now uh, Gyllenhaal has a bag of explosives, so he takes cops' boat out to bad guys' boat. And he's like, oh, where's uh, Dr. Hadi? She's supposed to be kidnapped. And then Big Dick Sheriff is like, ha, ha, stupid. <laughs> you think I let him kidnap my own daughter? And then bad guy, bad guy's like, actually, I actually, did kidnap actually, your daughter. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is so fucking stupid. <laughs> and so he actually, bad guy, actually did kidnap his daughter. So then Gyllenhaal blows a bag of C4, Simtex, whatever explosives in that boat. Mm. And has a little fisty cuff and a little... Fracas on the boat. Fracas on and, the boat. Until he gets out. Um, Dr. Hardy, she escapes out of the, the window when it blows or whatever and gets up. Uh, I've talked a little bit. You 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 take over here, little Todd. So, uh, where I do we go after the. At the some boat point, uh, they have got onto the boat with uh, the, the, the bad guy, the mm-hmm. main bad guy, the guy's the landowner guy. Yes. And, uh, you know, Jill and Hall uh, and uh, Dr. Hardy's on the same boat and. McGregor was kind of he, he he got his way onto that boat somehow too. Well, no, but bad guy McBad guy isn't a fan of McGregor being there, so he's not including him in any of this. And McGregor right. just shows up on a little boat at right. sea. He's just like hauling ass to the bad guy's boat in right. his own little boat. In his own, of his own. Boat. Yeah, that's how he shows. He kind of sees them leaving and yeah. follows them. Yeah, he sees them like kind of getting away in the in the cop boat, and he follows them. And uh, she no, she gets taken by bad guy McBad guy on his. Other little boat. A little boat. That's in the bigger boat. He's got like a hydro full or something like Largo <laughs> and Thunderball. And uh, so he, he bad, guy, bad guy's got a smaller boat. And he's kidnapped her in that boat. McGregor's trying to run over uh, Dalton, Dalton in the water. In the water. Then yes, he gets right. onto the boat and they have a little, little fight. And Connor's like, oh, we got our own little octagon. And he's like, who taught you shapes? Who taught you shapes? And it's like, here's that totally inconsistent stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, ends up. Uh, bad guy, bad guy, 
Jalen Hall catches up with him after he knocks Connor off his boat. That's right. He gets and then that boat wrecks into right outside of the roadhouse. Yeah, before that, there's another terrible CGI moment where somehow I don't remember exactly how it is, but Jalen Hall gets blasted over top of that boat and into the boat again like he was blasted oh, yeah, terribly yeah, yeah. into the back of that truck before. Right, right. Now he's terribly CGI blasted into the boat with him and then the boat ends up as they kind of jump off, bad guy bad guy crashes the boat into the roadhouse. Into the roadhouse. And goes flying, which sets up our last fight, of course, between him and Connor, mm-hmm. which is not an altogether terrible fight, mm-hmm. but by this point I could give a fuck. And it has that one awkward scene where they're having their big fight. And, and they get over to the piano, and Knox is banging Dalton's head on the piano, and it's just out of left field. This piano's out of tune. And Sounds then, good to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sounds fine to me. And I'm like, what is this? Why? Word? It's that, that tone, that inconsistent tone. It, it just it kills. Is it, Dalton uh, a nice guy? Is he a good guy? Is he a psychopath? Is he a jokester? Is yeah, he all is, the is above? Is he Mr. Rogers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But him and Connor have their fight, and uh, he ends up stabbing him with some pieces of frayed wood in the chest a few times. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the fight is, I mean, it had to be the best part of the movie. That's the only thing that could have. Saved it. That could have saved (laughs) it or or made, give it a little bit of a point would be that fight. Uh, Bad guy, McBad guy also lives and Conor McGregor's tired of his shit. So he just snaps his neck. (laughs) And I guess his plan, if he'd have, if he'd have won the fight would be, I guess, tell his father that Dalton killed him. So he just just broke his neck. But uh, yeah, Dalton stabs him with a wood a few times. You think Conor's dead. Uh, Dr. Hottie comes out, Big Dick Sheriff comes in, and he's like, hey, I've got you, Dalton. you got to get the fuck out of here. get out of here, I've man. got you covered. I'm having a character uh, development moment. <laughs> I'm switching allegiances now, and uh, you're going to get out of here. He goes to the bus station, and that's basically that's basically the end. So we do find out uh, that the, uh, the uh, dad and the little girl is back at what's left of that bookshop, and we find out that's where Dalton stashed that money. money. Yes. He gave him to the he money gave to the them. money to the the dad and the struggling the girl, girl at the yeah. bookstore. And uh, this the point the movie lost a bunch of points when Conor McGregor was introduced. There's a post credit scene or mid credit scene where we find out he he survived mm-hmm. the fight that lost more points. Dude, <laughs> I didn't even know there was one. I had looked down, was messing on my phone. I just happened to look up to see his ass yeah. walking out of the hospital. Here again, we get more Conor. <laughs> Conor McGregor ass. <laughs> Boy, I tell you this movie. And like, I mean, I know people are going to be like, it's supposed to be just a big, dumb, like, action, like, 80s cheese. But it's not, though. It it pretends it wants to be more at times. And that's what pisses me off about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, it pretends it wants to have, it wants to, like, change the narrative and make Dalton into something else. Like, all right, here, here's some things. Let me, get, let me give you some positives. I got one positive about this movie. Okay. I got one single positive. There's some interesting camera work at times. But True. then it gets a little old too fucking fast. And there was somebody in the reviews that was talking about the frame, the, like the frames per second issue, and there's mm-hmm. like a little bit of that. But I give one positive. There's some interesting camera work in some of the fights. That's the only positive I have about this movie. The negatives, everything else. <laughs> uh, Conor McGregor, he's awful. Gyllenhaal is fine. Most of the the rest of the cast is mediocre to awful in some portions. Right. Um, you got the forced romance subplot. That's a negative. Um, for me, when you need CGI in a Roadhouse movie, you've lost a fucking plot anyway. Because it's basically just fisticuffs. It's supposed to. It and should you don't be need simple. CGI. You shouldn't need CGI. That's when you're fight making, choreography, folks. Yeah. Um, That's all you needed. Kind of like the first one, but just ramped up to ten. It's a gross escalation of events. All of this for real estate and drugs. And again, we mentioned the drug angle is not leaned into at all. It's mostly about real estate. Real estate. Again, we mentioned it's only it's totally inconsistent. It starts as Mr. Rogers is a bartender and he's a nice guy and he doesn't take anything too seriously. And he turns into a psycho for a few scenes and is back to not taking things seriously and then making out of tune piano jokes during a final fight. And then uh, and then I mentioned about, you know, the, the girl in the bookstore. She's fine. Like, they don't beat her to death or beat her into a coma. Like, his motivation is kind of suspect a little bit. There's no Garrett that type death in this one. Yeah, he doesn't, have, set him he doesn't have a personal stake right. in anybody. Like, yeah, he does and with, nothing, really. Like, with Garrett. Like, at least Garrett was his, in the first, in the original Roadhouse, Wade Garrett was his mentor, was his friend, mm-hmm. maybe his only real true friend, the person that had his back in the world, and they killed that guy. That is... That's motivation. He didn't know that girl. Yes, she's a sweet little bookstore bookworm girl. And he yes. might have visited her a couple, three times. Fine. But yeah, he went there a couple times to look at porn on the computer. 
<laughs> there's our computer in the back. Don't come back here. <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, so um, here's here's two things. Um, one question, Todd. So the the crooks of the thing, like I said, it's, it's real estate, right? Real estate. The roadhouse itself is not important. The structure of the bar. It's the land it's that the it's on. It's the land that it's on. Mm-hmm. Why not just burn the motherfucker down? <laughs> At any point when it's closed. Just while it's closed it's up, not nobody's a there. Hour bar. Just burn it down. I don't think Daily Show Girl was going to hang around. She would have collected the insurance money, probably taking the payment from bad guy. I don't think she's sticking around to rebuild right. the roadhouse. Why not just burn it down? Forget Dalton. When he goes back to his boathouse... Send Conor McGregor there because he tells him to burn it down at one point, and then mm-hmm. the cops come. Just burn it down. <laughs> then, then no problem. You who's, had... he, who's he going to bounce then? <laughs> People on the beach. You'd have had no movie. You'd have no, <laughs> You'd have had no movie. If that's you'd done the that. that's the problem. And here's um, here's my big takeaway. Here's here's how to me. You take that interest, that one interesting idea this film has, and you make it that where it kind of could have been good. And I'm not saying it would have been good, but it would have been maybe interesting. Yeah. Lean into Dalton being a psycho. Mm-hmm. He killed his friend because he wanted to. He liked it. He liked how it felt. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. He hates that about himself. He has a death wish. He's too big of a coward to like take his own life. But he hopes that if he puts himself in these dangerous situations, somebody will be able to do it for him. Oh, yeah. Right? And have him go Mr. Rogers, have him fully go from Mr. Rogers to Ted Bundy. <laughs> like, like, really, like, mm-hmm. you know, give him, give him, give me something here. Like, he's not the hero. Like, it's not, it's not a Western. And they reference that a few times. It's, it's like a Western. You're the guy coming in oh, town yeah, and clean, yeah, up yeah. The, yeah. clean up the bar. You know, it's like a Western. Like, it's not a Western. He's not a good person. He's someone you don't want to know. Like everyone, including that little girl, the person who worked on, you know, uh, Frankie, the girl who worked on The Daily Show, uh, the, the bookstore girl, uh, Dr. Hottie, make him the character by the end of it that no one, like, no one wants to have met him. Yeah. Like make him like, you know, to the point where by the end of it, none of them, feel are better off for knowing him. Right. Like he's just come into this and like, at least you'd have something that's like narrative kind of interest, like to me. And like, you wouldn't just be stealing the roadhouse name for like a cash grab. And it maybe would set itself apart a little bit more and ha- be, have a little bit more of an interesting kind of notion to right. it. If you like really link, cause that's the most interesting thing that to me that it has is that he is like some kind of a psycho, mm-hmm. like lean into that, make him like, Make him not the hero. Make him a guy that, like, is, like, really, really morally gray. Yeah. And, you know, maybe his going too far is not just it, – it, it, it's what prompts all this or whatever. And, like, he's not the hero. He's mm-hmm. not the nice guy. He's not somebody that you really want to know. Like, he tells to that doctor, you don't want to know me. Yeah. Like, lean into that. I think that's a more interesting idea than what was here. And, you know, we, we talked about original Roadhouse. It, it wasn't about – it wasn't about the bar. It was it was a, about a pissing match between some rich scumbag yeah. and a bouncer uh, that was too stubborn to walk away. Right. This, it, the story, if you boil it down, it was irresistible force versus immovable object. Exactly. And yeah. it was simple and it was clean and you didn't need all this other shit and it just worked. And it's yeah. not the best movie, but compared to Roadhouse 2024, 1989, it's fucking, it's, it's Citizen Kane compared yeah, to right. this trash. And, like, that's the only thing I think that could have, like, kind of, if you'd lean into, kind of make, could have been interesting to me is, like, fully embrace this psychotic stuff. And, like, yeah. he didn't just kill his friend on accident. He did it because fighting gives him a way to, like, get rid of that anger. Yeah. And he's out to, like, hurt people and to kill people or something like that. Make him, make his character something like that. Yeah. Like, okay, take him from Rogers to Bundy. <laughs> that, that would have sold it a little bit more to me because of what you have here – a whole lot of nothing to me. Yeah. It's a whole lot of garbage. It's like uh, when we reviewed the original Roadhouse and I was kind of saying how it made me nostalgic for the old 80s, early 90s uh, action movies. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's a reason why they don't make them anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I think there's a simpler version of this that works. And, like, I don't want just the same thing, but this doesn't know what it wants to be at all. Yeah. It doesn't know what it wants the character of Dalton to be. It doesn't want to know... 
he doesn't want to perceive him. Because if you had him just stay like that one way throughout the movie, there's a more interesting angle. If he is Mr. Rogers and yeah. he's always that nice guy and like you can't bother him, there's some there's a little bit of narrative piece of that. Or if he is a psycho, if he is a wolf masquerading in a sheep's clothing, that's an interesting idea. But to never drill down on any one of them mm-hmm. and to have all this totally inconsistent stuff where you're making jokes in your final fight and you're having this UFC fighter that can't act walking around with his ass out all the time. He never even gives Knox a character, period. And he bad, just, he's and, just a bull in a china shop. Exactly. And and, and Bad Guy McBad Guy has a, the the stupidest, most cliched motivation for a land scheme. Like, you boil it all down, and it's it's literally nothing. And again, True. people will say, well, it's supposed to be a dumb popcorn movie. Yeah, but, like, you can still make a dumb popcorn movie and, like, still not come out of it with what you have here. You can, I, I agree. You can make something that's a little bit more uh, consistent in this pile of shit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, it just really makes me mad because, like, I see some potential here. Like, I and like, I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I think he's a good actor. I do as well. And I feel yeah. like a lot of people say like he just kind of turns into like whatever he he turns into his character a little bit from like Nightcrawler. Like, yeah, and, like I would have liked to kind of seen a little bit more of that. But like, yeah. I think he's a I think he's a good actor, and like, I think he's probably the only another you know positive thing here is he's he, he's pretty likable and then until he gets weird even weirder than he is and then you just never know really how to feel about him but it not because the story doesn't want you to it's just because yeah. you don't know how to feel about him because the story wants to make him uh kind of enigmatic you won't you don't know how to feel about him because the story doesn't <laughs> doesn't know what the story wants him to be right and that's the problem here and I don't know if it has any bearing, but I had read or heard that this was one of those productions that kind of got held up or halted when all the stuff happened in Hollywood with the writer's strikes and everything got stopped. So, yeah. you know, read know. what you will into that. I don't but, know who fucking wrote this. Right, but right. <laughs> whoever did, uh, I wouldn't use it on my resume. Right. That's for sure. Uh, any other final thoughts before we go into review, Todd? A uh, couple Easter eggs. All right, sure. Uh, when uh, Dalton first arrives into town and we see him walking over towards the bookstore, there's a restaurant right beside the bookstore that's named the Double Deuce. I did not know that. <laughs> okay. And I actually saw an interview with Jake Gyllenhaal where he was talking about the tattoos that were on him, and uh, he said there were some that were special, like uh, commemorations to Patrick Swayze. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't divulge what they were. He said, you'll have to watch the movie, kind of maybe pause it in spots, hit it, see if you can figure them out. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they are because I wasn't <laughs> about to go back and rewatch it. <laughs> Only one I remember, does he have like an equal sign or like two lines on his neck? I thought it was like an equal sign or something. Could have been. I don't know. This movie equal shit. Is that <laughs> what he's trying to tell us? But he, he did say that there's like Easter eggs in some of his tattoos. It's kind of like a remembrance or commemoration to Patrick Swayze. He said you have to, you know, be out and look for him and go look for him if you want to. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> a nice sentiment. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm not going back. <laughs> Me, I'm either. not going back. I, I uh, yeah, can't do it. Um, anything else we're going to reviews? I'm good. Uh, so we rank films on a one to ten scale, starting from one, the ranks are torture, two, awful, three, bad, four, subpar, five, mediocre, six, decent, seven, good, eight, great, nine, amazing, and ten, masterpiece. Todd, give us your review score for Roadhouse 2024. Uh, you know, uh, down through history, my personal history at least, there are some truly bad films that I really, really love. Uh, this, to me, is a truly bad film that I really, really don't like. Uh, I don't regret watching it. Uh, you know, it was a... Just a kind of all over the place action movie, and it's just a three for me. It's bad. Yeah, I uh, I was really torn about how to rank how to rate this because I'm like the the lowest scores I've give things. There's like a two for like Rebel Moon. Mm-hmm. I've give like the Flash and some stuff a three, um, but I do think it's a bad movie. And like there's there's differences in the in a, in a, what makes a Flash bad and a Roadhouse 2024 bad. Right. But I think I still think it's like. It's 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 still a bad movie, but it may not be the same level of bad. Level of badness makes sense. I'm I'm gonna go with a three as well. I think this is a bad movie, so I'm gonna give it a three, which ranks it as bad. Um, I feel like I feel like my time was wasted in a way. <laughs> uh, like I mean, <laughs> I just I really didn't care for it, and I really I didn't care for it because it, it 
pretends that it's it's got more to say than it actually does. And yeah. I, whether it's the writer's strike or whether it's poor direction or poor whatever, poor storytelling or story crafting, there's some interesting ideas here that were not explored. And since you're not going to explore them in any kind of meaningful way, just simplify it and be, yeah. be something closer to the original. Again, I'm not big on remakes, but if you don't have something original to tell and if you're going to like steal the name Roadhouse – maybe make it a little bit closer to what made Roadhouse yeah. popular and made it uh, such a, a lasting film. Yeah. So this film has nothing to say, has nothing new to say, and the only interesting idea is it completely fumbles, uh, not even on the one-yard line. It doesn't, it doesn't get across <laughs> It doesn't get across fucking midfield <laughs> with some of this stuff. So, yeah, for me, it's a bad film. Okay. Uh, so, Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and get in touch with us on social media. We are at Tau Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tau Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at TauCapesPod at gmail.com. Uh, if you enjoy the show, please consider uh, leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. Tau Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Bye, guys. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>